was in the Atlantic and Pacific. Okay. Were you drafted or did you enlist? I enlisted. And where were you living at the time when you enlisted? Norfolk. Norfolk. I mean, as a matter of fact, I'm a native of Norfolk. I was okay. born in Norfolk. You were born in Norfolk? I was born in Norfolk. I'm a native of Norfolk. I wasn't born in Winchester, Torrington, or Harvard. I was born in Norfolk. I'm a native of Norfolk. I was okay. born on Winchester Road. Whoa. Yeah. Um, do you recall the date that you enlisted? Uh, February 25th. Oh, no. No, the day I, that was the day I got sworn in. February 25th was the day I was sworn in. I no, I don't remember what day it was. It was in January of uh, 46 I enlisted, but I don't remember the date. I don't okay. remember what day it was. Uh, I don't know. If, I don't think it's on my discharge. That's okay. We'll get it. Yeah, I got, I got some more no, I didn't bring them down. I didn't, no, I didn't bring them down. I didn't bring them down to the upstairs. That's okay. Um, why did you join? Why did you enlist? Well... I had three brothers that were in the army that was in World War II, and I had two brothers that were in the Navy in World War II, and I told my mother that I had to even score up and make it three and three, and I said, the first brother that comes home, I'm going to, when I get 17, I'm going to list in the Navy to even up the score, and I did. <laughs> that's, a, that's a great reason. Yeah, um, it was a great honor, though, to yeah, be able to do that. It is. It always is. Um, tell me about your first day in the service. Well, it was, it was uh, of course, I had brothers in that were, had, that were in the services, so they, they kind of gave me the lowdown of what was going on and, and what to do and what not to do. And, <laughs> and uh, No, it was, no, boot camp wasn't bad at all. No, we had a lot of fun in boot camp. Uh, um, we had, uh, it was cold some days, it was cold. We was in Bainbridge, Maryland, and uh, it was, uh, well, I say it was down the swamp. Uh, oh. They had more diseases than that hospital and I guess there was anybody could uh, put in the book no. Uh, but no it wasn't bad it wasn't too bad at all the food wasn't bad at all um, we lost one boy down there it wasn't in our company uh, they were uh, cleaning out septic tanks in front of the chow hall and whoever did it did not cover the septic tank it was a big great big oh. tank and the kid fell in it oh. and by the time they got him out it was the detergent stuff he uh, just eat, 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 eat the kid right up. Oh, it was all it was oh. it was a terrible mess. Oh gosh. Oh. We used to have to walk by it there to go in the chow hall and were, Oh yeah, it was a terrible mess. Yeah. They, after that boy they yeah. oh they had fences around them 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 uh septic tanks and most of them were a lot of them were open. Uh, when I was in the hospital in Bainbridge, Maryland, we had work detail after I got out of there from uh scholar fever and we always had to go with a pail with a big long uh I got a uh, rake handle on it. You reach down it and pick it out by the pail full and dump it in fifty gallon barrels to clean out the to clean out the cesspools. Yeah, yeah. It was it was, it was quite a, a lot of guys didn't like that because I said, Don't you push me. Don't you push me. Because it's gonna be all over it, fella. That stuff detergent in there to eat you alive. Oh, oh boy. Poor kid. Oh yeah. Do you remember any of your instructors there? Do you remember any of your instructors at boot camp? No, I don't. No, the only member I would re actually remember would have been the chief, uh, Irwin. He was our chief petty officer. No, no. Okay. Um, how'd you get through it? I made it through fine. I did. I made yeah. it through fine. No, we had no problems at all. No. As I say, we got out of boot camp. We were supposed to came home on our leave, but they had a uh, railroad strike. At that time, they had the old locomotives, the old steam engines then. Yes. And uh, it was in May. Right near the end of May, that we, uh, our orders came in that the that the train strike was over and we got our leaves to come home. Okay. Yeah. yeah. So after boot camp, where did you go? Well, I went back. To, well, we 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 we, we, were, we stayed at uh, Bainbridge, Maryland, and then we came home on our boot leave. Then we went back to Bainbridge, Maryland. We wait for our orders to where we were going to be shipped to. And okay. we were shipped to Newport, Rhode Island. Okay. To go on the USS to uh, yeah, sure. USS Saipan is uh, Gunner's Banks. But what happened? I got a hernia and I went to the Naval Hospital in Newport, Rhode Island for a hernia. And then uh, by the time I got out of there and got back to the base, our company had, had left, had gone. Uh -huh. And I stayed there until ooh, October. Yes, yeah, it was in October. I got. I came back, and my orders were in that we were going to get shipped aboard USS uh, 
Valley Forge is, uh, they changed our rates from uh, seaman to fireman, oh, okay. the first in the engine room. Yeah. It was, uh, it was a great honor to, well, I, got, I got honor. She was a good ship. She was a good clean ship. I mean, it was clean. We had inspections every Friday. Um, the officers come around with white gloves on. And then we were in, um, Guantanamo Bay, Cuba. We had the Admiral come aboard with his inspection squad. Well, wow. white gloves. And in the engine room that I was in, we had this uh, silver powder, silver powder, and we had what they call lube oil. It was a little bit heavier than kerosene, and we get a pill and put maybe about that much in it. We put the silver polish in it, stir it all up. When everybody out of the engine room but one guy, we go along with a rag. Go over all them deck plates. The officers come down there. <laughs> Boy, them deck plates are in excellent shape. <laughs> how you guys came so clean? <laughs> we went down the way how we kept them clean. <laughs> we our our, our uh, uh, first class petty officer there, Gilbert, he wasn't going to tell how we kept them. And Shepard, they weren't going to tell how they kept them deck plates so clean. <laughs> oh, God, it was something. Oh, geez, they couldn't figure out how, how they keep them deck plates so clean. <laughs> we start down the lower deck, we come up to the upper deck, and then they, they would, uh, the stuff would dry pretty quick. And then they'd go up to the hatchway, the ladder come up out of the last hatchway, which came out into the chow hall. And then the guy would do the deck plates, go back down the engine rooms. So one guy had been in the engine room all the time, so it was dry. Oh yeah, every Friday morning you had inspection. Every Friday morning? Every Friday morning you had inspection, yeah. yeah. Wow. I was out off the ship for a while, and um, I came back, and uh, they, gave, they gave me compartment duty, in the compartments in the bathroom. That was my job. Oh yeah, everybody had those things. Oh yeah, that was my job. Oh, I never had no problem. Always got a, always got excellent. Always got excellent. I the guys there, and in, 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 uh, especially in the, in, uh, in the bunk room where we slept, the guys leave everything under their in their in their beds, you know, stuff under the mat. I take everything out. And I had a couple lockers that nobody used. I stuffed everything in the lockers. So when and the didn't officers, tell? so when the no, when they came back, I put everything back. Oh, in the okay. I knew where they were. So and it's nice when to the see officers it. came in the inspection, you had to be down there and you had to stoop the officer and they go through and oh, this is good, this is good. Oh, that's excellent, that's excellent, that's excellent. <laughs> they they, they leave. I throw everything back in the bunks. <laughs> I tell them guys, oh, guys, come on, you gotta do better than that for me. Come on now, help me out a little bit. <laughs> but yeah, same thing with the engine room. Oh yeah, the engine room, that was that was that was that was something. And same thing when I was in the fire room. There was the same thing in the fire room. You had to keep you had to keep things clean. I mean, you didn't let anything go. Was, no, your officers wouldn't do that. Even your petty officers, they wouldn't do it. They wouldn't let you get away with it. No, you had to be. You had to keep things clean. Both so, ships, both ships were were were, uh, were excellent ships. They were both. They were both good, good, good ships to be on. I, if I had to go back in again, I'd do it all over again. I yeah. really, truly would. This time, I think if I went back in again, I might have, I might have taken a chance on doing twenty years. Yeah. I just smartened up a little bit, and learned a little better than I did. Learned a little bit more of what I knew, but yeah, but you want to come back and and take live, you know? Yeah, you don't know. You don't know what's going on. I mean, that's where things go. You don't know. And I got one kid from Norfolk, uh, Nolson. Uh, he was on a uh, two hour with me. He never came back home. I don't know if he's alive or dead. No. He would be either eighty eight or eighty nine years old. If he's still alive, mm -hmm. his family's all gone. He had a brother and two sisters. I don't know whatever happened to him. I, I don't know if he got transferred off the ship. Or I don't think they stepped him on the ship. I would assume they probably started out with a whole new crew. They probably took everybody off the ship because I wouldn't think the ship was in dry dock. They didn't need nothing running on it. They didn't. So I would assume he might have got his his. his uh, Squadron probably got transferred off. I went to somewhere else. Mm -hmm. We had the uh, uh, ninety Marines on. Wow. Ninety Marines we had on there. Yeah. yeah. Wow. They used to uh, guard the captain. They used to guard the captain. Matter of fact, it was yeah, it was a forge. 
corporal went up to check the, the, the private uh, guard and the captain, and they could see who could draw the fastest. The corporal shot the private. <gasps> oh, my gosh. I thought the captain got shot. I said, hey, fellas, hey, the captain got shot. <laughs> we got rid of him. Come to find out where the brave corporal shot the private. We've seen who could draw the fastest. Not kill him. Kill him now. I don't know what ever did happen to the, to the corporal. I don't know what it, they probably called Marshall. But they were tough on there. They were tough. We had two guys on the Tuawa. They were still in. I don't know if it was rifles or 45s. They'll take them over shore and sell them. Now, wait a minute. on the forge. It was on the forge. Because I was in the I was in the broke apartment building and I had to go down to the ship locker to get supplies. And I walked down there and here's all these plain clothes guys down there. What the hell are these plain clothes guys doing on FBI agents? Wow. God they were stealing guns and they were selling them. Yeah. Oh yeah they 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 probably done like they probably done the rest of life in prison. Yeah. Oh sure. We had a kid. I had a kid aboard. Uh, yeah, aboard the carrier. He was from um, Vermont. Never drank. Never spoke. Never ever heard him say a curse word. I, we was in Philadelphia. I don't know what happened to the kid. He got out. He got under the wrong bunch of guys. They stole a federal agent's car. They went to Mississippi, they got arrested, they told him in jail. The last I know, he was, uh, I don't know if they, of course they had him for desertion, jumping ship, stealing a federal uh, car, probably got 20, 30 years in federal prison, wow. 18 years old. Nice kid to everyone know. He would have never got through it, ever thought that he would have ever, ever got in trouble like that. Oh, oh, I had another kid from Virginia, uh, McGee. Uh, he was another one. Um, he, I don't know what, why that kid did. His father died, and they had an officer on there. Of course, an officer on there, you're not supposed to have nothing to do with officers. But I found out afterwards, if one of the officers on there gave him nothing money to go home to go to his father's funeral. Uh -huh. And I talked him out of going to AWOL three or four times. Oh, he was going to go. Oh, yeah, he was going to go. We had, no, it was on the Tuawa. I don't know, it was a 12 or four. We had 15, 20 guys on AWOL. Matter of fact, uh, Had it in the Tuawa. Guy was going to go over the side. Whew. And I was on the stern garden, trash cans. I said, You ain't going over the side when I'm standing here. I said, You wait till I get up here in the officers, go up the other end where the officers' gangway is. I said, You want to go over the side, you go ahead. I said, You ain't going over the side when I'm through the seat back over the side of the down the dock. Down the rope he went. He went to Boston. He got pneumonia. One of the guys got a letter from him. I don't know if he ever made it or not. We had 15 or 20 guys when he walked. Aww. Oh, yeah. Bad. Jump ship. Yeah. Hey, 99% of the time they're going to catch you. They'll catch you. Of course, yeah. today. Today, it's, 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 it's worse today than it was then. Today, they got one he walked. Today, they, they'd find you overnight. It's, uh, it ain't worth it. It ain't worth it. it. Worth it. It ain't worth getting a dishonor. You get a dishonor with discharge, you ain't gonna know if you're a man without a country. Yeah. So the rest of Might as well take you out back and shoot you. Yeah. You might as well go to state's prison. At least you go to state's prison, you get your, you get your citizenship back. But if you get dishonor or discharge from the service, you're done. Wow. You're done. You're all done. You, you, you're, you're a man without a country. Oh, yeah. Oh. You'd be surprised the guys that go AWOL. Not me. Not me. 
I well, remember we had a guy in Rhode Island. He was a veteran. They were going to operate on for hernia. You wouldn't believe this he had. Twelve fingers and twelve toes. Six fingers in each hand. Yeah. Same thing with toes. He was so scared, but I was like, here, maybe a little further to the, from the woods. Railroad track went through. He went down and jumped the freight train. Oh. He was a World War II veteran. He scared, got him scared to death. Scared, oh, he was scared to death. He was going to die. He didn't want to be operated on. He got in that freight train, he was gone. I had to pick up there. They get all them guys. I was in the hospital right up there. I would assume probably ninety eight percent of them are probably all all passed on by now. Yeah. We had one kid up there from uh, no, World War II. He was over on an island. He had some kind of skin disease on his face. His fiance, his bride, came in to see him. And this doctor was doing skin graft on him from his arm to his face. He was like this, kind of skin graft off his arm. And the doctor, I think the doctor went on vacation or something. Got an infection and didn't take Oh my God, he's only kidding, he shooting himself. I never felt so sorry for a guy, for a young kid in my life, as I did for him. It was a naval house in Newport, Rhode Island. Oh is that when you had your hernia? Yeah. Oh yeah. my God. Oh my God. It was terrible. Oh. Then I used to damn nuts up there. They used to give me a job. The guy's daddy used to have to take downstairs and put them in the icebox. <laughs> <laughs> what is it? I tell you, it was a great. It was a great experience. If I had to do it again today, and I was young, and I know what I know now, it would have been a lot of changes made. Oh yeah, there have been a lot of changes made. Yeah, I was a. I spoke pipe. For years and years, and and uh, I always smoked small stem pipe in the service because you had to have a small stem pipe so you could stick it in your pocket. Again. Yeah, nobody could see it. And uh, yeah, it was it was. Uh, you see a lot of country. You see a lot of country. Now we went through the Panama Canal. I went to the Panama Canal in '47, and uh, I went down there. Probably. Three or four years ago. With my my son and his wife, and they had brought a trip. We went on a cruise, and we'd go on a smaller ship. We'd go through the Panama Canal. Well, he come back from nighttime. Here's a letter in my box at the door. And I said, "What the hell? Anybody down here don't know where the hell we?" And it was letters they canceled it. So we went on kind of like a bus tour. It didn't have a change. They were sad with long cardboard boxes. Yeah. So that's when I was probably 60. They were 65 years ago. They looked the same as they did when I was down there in 47. In 47. Same thing. Now they're building a new canal, I think, was just the other side of where the old one is, that any ship can go through it. Mm -hmm. Making a big wider, so I think that. yeah. but that's a quite a piece of that's a quite a piece of equipment. I'll tell you, to be on the ship there, and and you're going in there. You get into there, and all of a sudden you can just, you can feel the ship going up. <laughs> you get you up so high, and then you open the gates up, you go in another one. They raise you up a little higher, and you go in another one. Oh yeah, it's a great, it's a great, it's a great thing to uh, for something like that. Oh yeah, it is. It, it. Oh, I if I had to do it again, I'd do it. I'd okay. do it. Now, what was your assignment on the um, Valley Forge, USS Forge? I was a uh, uh, well, I was a fireman in the engine room. Uh, assignment and all. Of it, well, you did a little bit of everything. You had to check, make sure you check your uh, the steam lines and steam valves, and we had um, oh, oh, I'm trying to think. We had condensers. A water used to come through them, and they had pipes of baby about, maybe about the size of my finger. Okay. And we had to take a porthole out, crawl in there with a wire, go through every one of them, every one of them pipes, clean the dead fish out. 
<laughs> and then uh, we him. had we, we had another one after we got that done. We had another one uh, oil sumps with uh, what they call it was a little bit heavier kerosene. They called lube oil. And we pumped it from one from the uh, uh, port st uh, side to the starboard side. We had to go down and clean them all out. And uh, yeah, but, uh, same thing. You had to go through a little porthole like that. And I was smart when I went in there. I used to take all my clothes off of my undershorts. <laughs> and uh, yeah, then I, I did. I got the uh, only time in my life I ever got boils. I got one on my arm here. I still got a scar. Then I got one on my shoulder. And I went to sit bay. And uh, they, were gonna have, they thought they were going to have to lance it. And I was soaking it in uh, some kind of solution, like hot water or something, uh -huh. trying to draw it out. And when it broke, a cork came out of it, pretty as big as my thumb. I got a scar here right now, right in the middle of my arm. Oh, yeah. Right there. Right there. And I had one on my shoulder. But they said it was from, well, see what the problem was. 7.30 o'clock at night, they shut hot water off in showers. And uh, we, uh, a bunch of us were walking up one day, and the, the lieutenant commander was uh, sick basis. Uh, we fellas were getting up, and we all had what in the service they would call it a jock hitch. Mm -hmm. You break out with rats between your legs. Yeah. Well, it's not taking a shower. We couldn't take showers because we, uh, we had a four day watch. We couldn't take a shower. We told the lieutenant commander, the commander, ah, ah. well, it wasn't very long. I guess the hot water was on. <laughs> we take showers. Oh, God, we could just about walk. Oh, my God, we were, oh, my God, Lord Jesus. That's just not sanitary, oh, too. God, it was terrible. Oh. I was trying to save water. Jesus got the whole ocean. We were making our own water. <laughs> Oh, to, is that what you were doing? You were, uh, we, used, we used to make our own water. Oh, 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 it was, oh you couldn't ask for better water in the world while well, we had board ship. Oh, my God, the water was beautiful water on there. And in the engine room and the fire room, uh, they had salt pills, um, probably as big as the end of my finger. And once in a while, the doc, one of the doctors would catch me, and they said, you get enough. I had a commander when they caught me in the forge. He says, you getting enough salt, you getting enough uh, drinking enough water? I said, I think so, sir. Well, he says, you may, they had a tub of, a glass full of, of well, salt pills. Okay. He says, make sure you're taking them salt pills. I said, so he, we had guys in, the, in, the, in the, especially the fire rooms were passing out. They won't get, they, they dehydrated. They get dehydrated. Water. Oh, yeah. Now today, if you did that, you got high blood pressure. <laughs> Blow you right to see one. Blow you right out of the mat. But once in a while, you'd have to take them. Yeah, you'd have to. You'd take your water. Well, no, we had, we had excellent water. Um, you had drinking fountains and, 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 uh, Engine rooms and the fire rooms were drinking found. But, but if you were on uh, 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 maneuvers, uh, you couldn't drink. You couldn't touch nothing. You had to have your stage buttoned up. Caught, well, we had a kid got burnt up. And when I was on the, when I was home on leave on the forge, he was an electrician. Uh, he went down the fire room and the steam line broke about the size of my little finger. Uh. Uh, 18 years old, burned his lungs up, and the chief, born, chief petty officer got burnt pretty bad too. If I had been there, I would have had to got him out because that was my that was my battle station. Okay. The, the hatchway was right here, and I was right here. Right? Just this would have been on the hatchway. I'd had to went down, and got him out. That's your battle. That was your battle station. Battle I've station. heard about that. Yeah, that was from... my battle station. Yeah, okay. Yeah, yeah. But then things went on. We uh, were sailing, and. Uh, about two o'clock, one o'clock, two o'clock in the morning, the general alarm goes off, and I'm up trying to get dressed, and geez, what a time I had. And I run down there and had these old, old Scott Air Packs. Oh, God, Lord have mercy. That lieutenant there, and he was trying to get me in one. <laughs> and, oh, mercy, oh, God, I thought he was going to get me. Life jacket locker caught on fire. Oh, my gosh. So they finally got me, got the damn, we finally got the damn thing running. And I got up there and I threw life tags off the ship for about two hours. And, and uh, 8 o'clock, yeah, 7.30, I had to go eat. Before 7.30, I had to go eat. I had to be on watch at 7.30 to relieve the watch so he could go eat. Oh, God, what a mess that was. We, I, the ship had sunk. We had no life tags on board. Oh, my God. I don't know what, I, I still don't know what happened. Must, 
and the ship was no. I don't. I, I have no idea whether somebody set him on fire. I don't know whatever happened to him, but it was it was the whole body was something else. But when I tell an alarm, I'm falling. You better be ready for business. Yes. You better be ready to be right there, boy. You better be at your battle station. You better look out when you go down them hatchways. You didn't make a mistake because you did. You're going to get stopped with that. Oh. oh. So was it when the alarm went off? Were they were they drills? Uh no, the no, the only time the alarm went off is something badly happened. Oh, okay. Something badly happened. No, okay. no, 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 no. Well, we had drills, but no, we no, 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 no. When the burger alarm went off, the, the alarm went off like that. Something badly happened to the ship. Okay. Uh, it was the same thing when during World War Two when they were getting attacked or something. The general alarm would go off, yes. and everybody yes. would knew where they got to go. Their battle station, they knew where they got to go. Either gunner's mates or whatever they got to do. Of course, us guys, we all had to go down the hole. You had to go down. We so had to go down the hole. Jeez. That's the only problem with that thing was on both carriers. I was down, well, almost the bottom of the ship. We never got hit with a torpedo. Goodbye, fella. We yeah. don't know you. Ugh. And if you got out of there, you were lucky. Yeah. Because you probably got burnt after steam. Yeah. Uh, yeah, that steam is bad. I got burned a couple of times with steam. It's it's it ain't funny. It ain't funny. It's it's and I got um, we had a short circuit in uh electrical box in the engine room on the forge. And I'm down there trying to screw a, a extension light into it. I got knocked down three times. Found the right plan, I got right back up again. Last time I fell down first class, I don't know how he ever got down the hatchway. He was a big man, he probably weighed two hundred and 2,230 pounds. He'd come down that hatchway like a bullet and grabbed a hold of me. You all right, Kelly? You all right? He said, I hope so. I said, I got knocked out a couple of times. He'll touch that again, he says. You will have an electrician right down there and fix that. We were short in it. Of course, in the villages, we were standing in the middle, in the villages, we were water. You're talking about being dead. Yeah. Oh, man. Yeah, I know that. Oh. Yeah, the black half the time there was water in the bilges. Oh. And then the worst of it was we had to uh the last one last ends there, we had to go down into the bilges because all the got you got all the steam mines in there. Yeah. We had one kid that got down in there, the kid was a little bit on the heavy side, he got down there and he couldn't get out. Oh. Who'd you send down? Crazy Kelly. <laughs> the skinny kid. <laughs> what a time I had getting him out. But uh we had to go down into the villages. We had to take out a, a, a porthole. We had to go down to the bottom of the ship and paint the inside the bottom of the ship. Oh, come on. For what? Was it, was anybody ever down there? So it wouldn't rust. It was oh, so it wouldn't rust. We had the chicken. Okay. Okay. And the thing of it is, too, when we were, when I went on the, the, the Tuawa, what did they do? They put me inside the the, the 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 firewalls of the boilers to clean them. You come out there, you were black, you were black into my shoes. Uh. Oh God! I said to myself, I can't do this. So what we did was we took the, the old clothes with us. We take them, we come out, we take them off. Take our cleaning clothes and put on. Try to get washed up what we could. Yeah. Put our clean clothes on and go up. We got, we got caught upstairs in the, in, on, on the deck. They caught my, in fact, I almost got caught my school. I was up on the deck and I had dirty clothes on and, uh, and uh, was, I was on the forge. And uh, uh, one of them uh, Air Force officers that was a uh, master of arms was behind me caught my school. Oh. So when when did you go? So you were mostly down in the. Uh, I was on the hole all the time. Yeah. I was here the in the fire room, range room. Yeah, yeah. I was so on the whole, all the time. when did you get up on, to go on on the deck? <laughs> Could you do it when you had your time off? <coughs> oh yeah, yeah. <coughs> Excuse me. Oh no, when you done your watch, and you had to, of course you had your three meals, and you had to go up on the up on the hangar deck, and you'd have a line probably throw from here down to the end of the parking lot. Maybe double or three in a three breast. And you start from the chow hall right up through across the flight deck or the hangar deck. Oh, yeah, sometimes you'd be 15, it'd be an hour, an hour and a half before you got down, the, before you got down into the chow hall to eat. Uh. Oh, I got caught a couple of times and, and um, chow hall was closed. We had to go to, uh, to the officer to watch, get a special permit so we could eat. Oh yeah, <coughs> we had a 
We left Virginia. We had a tanker with us, Mitchell. It was named the tanker. We got racing with her. And I was in the engine room. Eight hour watch. Oh. 33, 33 and the third knots we were going with the, with the, with the aircraft carrier. We had a fire right up, boy, we had part of the old cold right <laughs> door. Yeah, they had standing watches on the gauges, on the condensers and everything. You had to watch everything, okay. make sure everything was all right. And make sure the little well was, was running from going through all the machinery. Everything was getting oiled up, you know. Oh yeah, eight hour watch I stood. Wow. No relief. Ever gets assigned to the mess hall? Not aboard ship, I didn't. Uh, Not for you guys. No. Uh, <coughs> <coughs> Very much wrong with that. We got, we got, uh, we got in the mess hall. Uh, they put us in. The, I got into. I didn't have to do any cooking. Matter of fact, I was wait a minute. I got to leave that man. Uh, we had to wash the dishes. Yeah. The trays and stuff. And one night, uh, the officer comes up and says, uh, "Room for two or three volunteers. We're going to work all night with the cook." He was from Bridgeport. Oh. Cooking roast beef, roast like that. Oh. Trays, big trays, big trays. And the two of them on the Oh, he says, wait a minute now. He says, this one's for us. <laughs> wow. Special. Yeah, we worked all night. We didn't have to work the next day. We had the day off. Okay. So I went out in the shack somewhere to try to get some sleep, but I didn't get much sleep. <laughs> guys didn't get damn food to let you sleep. You couldn't hide. You couldn't go in the barracks or sleep. Yeah, yeah, I never forget that. Yeah, but we were we when we were both times that we were in the chow hall, uh, we were in uh, uh, washing dishes, washing okay. the tray, the dishes. Yeah, we were washing dishes. Yeah. Oh, that was that was a job and a half too. Okay, but, so uh, what was your um, what was your assignment on the Tawana? Tawana. I was fireman in the fire room. Same thing. Same and thing. No, I was in, well. I was in the engine room on the on the forge. Engine room, right? Yeah, and then I was in the fire room on the twelve. Okay. Yeah. How was that different in your duties? Oh, you all, well, that's where they, that's where they, uh, in the fire room, that's where they had the boilers. That's where they get the steam to run the ship. Okay. That's where they get the steam to run the ship. Oh, yeah, I can remember we were going one night, and uh, I don't know what happened. Something happened. <coughs> <coughs> they held a full speed astern. I took one of the burners in, and, of course, as I said, I didn't know nothing. I was stupid. I didn't know what was going on. And I threw the burner and it backfired. And the second class petty officer was in back of me and he knew enough to throw the fuel on. Fuel come out, oh, fire come out all around me. Oh. <laughs> yeah. We kept on, we kept right on sailing. We didn't stop. We kept right on going. Oh, yeah, you had some quite some, you had quite some experiences in that engine room, in that fire room. Engine room wasn't bad. Engine room, we didn't have to worry about anything. Just make sure everything was running good. That's okay. Didn't have nothing to worry about there. And then when I got in there, I was on there for a while. They put me on what they called um, sound-powered telephones by your voice. My voice carried so good they put me on. <laughs> but the best thing of it was this guy that got to it, but then I never got, this one I never got court martial. Uh, we were staying watch eight hours a day and working. And some days we weren't getting too much sleep. So, yeah, I think those on the earphones. I was standing down there smoking pipe. Sound was good. Standing up. She said, come on, wake me up. Said, oh, she was third time going over there. Uh -huh. He says, you do that again? He says, I'm going to have to court martial. Yeah. I says, well, I think you're going to have to, Chief. I says, I said, I think I'm going to go back to sleep again. <laughs> yeah, it was a, uh, last name was Rostuccio. And uh, there's quite a story to that. Uh, it's too bad. He, 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 was a, he was a good, he was a good, if, he, if the guy likes you, he'd do anything God's will for you. Yeah. He was, uh, I think he was Polish. He had a big nose on him. He's called Ho's Nose. <laughs> One of the officers called up on the engine room looking for him. The guy says, you mean hose nose? Uh-oh. Oh, boy, we went to orders the next morning, and boy, I guess we got hose nose, all right. Oh, 
man, man, was he mad. He was jumping out of his seat to look for him. Oh, boy. He was ready to kill. Kids should have known better. You don't do that. Tell an officer to, to the guy, call the guy by that name. Go by what his name is. You don't call him by what, what the guys call him in the engine room, but raising, I mean, raising hell with him. You don't do that. <laughs> you don't even do that to his face. You don't walk up to him and say, hey, host, host. Jeez, the guy should get shot. Oh, yeah, I don't forget that. Oh, man, did he give us the bone hush retreat that morning. Oh, boy, he was. But he was a good chief, though. He was a good chief. He went to, um, I talked to one of the guys afterwards. He got transferred to uh, the state of Washington. And I don't know if he went on another ship or what he will have, but he said he turned him in hell. Oh. He had two more years to go to retire. Yeah. Maybe it's 20 years. He had 18 years and more. He was a good chief, though. He was a good chief boy. He, 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 he caught me sleeping more than once, but a couple times he caught me sleeping. He never knew it. I was in the bottom part of the engine room at uh, the uh, well pumps, sitting on a, on a five gallon pail, sound asleep. And up one night, put a shoulder on my, on my, put his hand on my shoulder, he said, What, uh, what Lube well pump you on? Start port or starboard? <laughs> so I said, well, I didn't jump right out of the chair. And I ran up to the deck fights. <laughs> Guys, get the holy hell on me. Sound asleep. Sound asleep. But you know, if you did that, well, even at that time when I was in, there was still wartime, there was still classified as wartime, they shoot you. Yeah. Oh, yeah, they shoot you right there. Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. That's the one with you. It was all business, and guys were all business. Oh, now, yeah, now where did you go on the Tawana? Tawala? Tawala. Uh, Pacific, just the Pacific. Okay. Just the Pacific, yeah. We had a couple of. Uh, we got two or three maneuvers over to her when I was on her, yeah. She was a, she was a good ship. Was, was that the ship. one that went through the Panama Canal? No, that was Valley Forge. Oh, the Valley Forge. Valley Forge went through, through. It was so through the Panama Canal and Valley Forge, yeah. Okay. Valley Forge, yeah. Happy Valley. Okay. She was a good ship. The only thing is, is hey, regardless of where you go, it's just like here with the state cops, you got the good ones and the bad ones. Yeah. I don't care where you go, you can Even your petty officers. We have good petty officers, you have someone be want to shoot them. <laughs> but uh, that's one thing I can say though, out of all the petty officers that I had, I never had any problems, I never had much, not too, I didn't have too much problems with the chiefs. I had that lieutenant, or acting lieutenant, and then I had that other lieutenant in the, in the, in the fire room there that he was going to, he wanted to court martial me. I said something to him and he didn't like it. He was going to do it the way he wanted to do it and so on. He was going to do it. Kid at 17 years old, 18 years old, you can't say too much. <laughs> yeah. They hang you. But if you know better, but. Um, did you ever sustain any injuries when you were in the no, service? No, 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 no. Like you had, you had the mind of burns, but no, nothing no, really no, serious. Nothing, just, no, the only problem I had when I was in the service was just a hernia. Okay. Oh, that's the only thing that I had. And boils, of course, that can happen to anybody. <clears throat> oh, I did have the hives too. I had the hives like, uh, I, that was another one. I was on the Tuala. And, uh, I had the midnight. I had the midnight watch with the, with the second class petty officer. And I get something in my face like this. Oh. Eyes are closed. Yeah, I close my eyes. I can see a little bit. And the more, the closer I got to where it was hotter, I almost go crazy. Just, oh. I got down this fire room. And, the other officer came down. Man, he says, You can't stand the watch on me. I said, No, it's not going crazy. I said, The seat's right. The seat's going to kill me. He says, I'm going to go right on my cup, bigger mine. I didn't know what the hell I had. I, I had no idea what I had. Yeah. So we called up the officer of the watch and he says, uh, Sir, he says, I got a man down here, not fit for duty. The officer says, Why? He says, He's, he's sick. He got something, he, he, he scratched himself to death. So the officer came down and looked at him, oh my, go sick bay. I said, sir, there's no expense going to sick bay, there's, there's no doctors there. I said, I'll go back to the compartment where it's cooler. I'll go to sleep, I'll get up in the morning, and I'll go to sick bay, because the doctors were there. 
Oh, it didn't. I don't know. I said, I told you, they told me, they told me when I sat and said, my oh, Jesus God. I was there a week. Oh. Uh-huh. Week or more. Oh, I don't know what I eat. What the hell? I until to this day. I don't know what I got into, what gave them to me. But oh man, did I have a dog. Oh man, 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 you talk about scratching. Oh, you want to tear the hide right off you. Uh. Oh, good thing I didn't have no fingernails. That time I'd be spiting my fingernails down to the there was nothing left on there, it was just a little stub. And uh, oh yeah. Oh, I was terrible sick with the eyes. Terrible. My face all blew up. Did they Close give you anything eyes. for it? Oh, yeah, oh, yeah, oh, yeah, oh, yeah, oh, sure, they, they put, me, put me on medication. Now, when okay. I had the boil, they, uh, they give me medication for that, too, yeah. They okay. Said, and when I had on the shoulder, yeah. I want to run up on the shoulder. I used to tell the girls, you see that scar there behind me? <laughs> see that scar right there? I said, they shot me. Well, where two more arms came out my shoulder? <laughs> they believe it, they believe it. I had the girls down there crazy. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but it was a big, I tell you, <laughs> if a kid can behave himself, and do what he's told, you got it made. Yeah. But if you can't do that, that's the way you get through. Don't put him in the service. Don't put him in the service. Because they're going to wind up with a dishonorable discharge and they're going to be a man without a country. That's, that's that what you need. I've seen a lot of kids in there. That, I don't know how many of them I've ever seen there that went AWOL. Yeah. It's terrible. That's too bad. It ain't worth it. It ain't worth it. You ruin the rest of your, you ruin your whole life. Because eventually. one choice. Now, they had a guy here, what was that today on television? Broke out of jail. God, I think he was 70 something years old. They finally caught him. Threw him back in jail, so he shot his jail sentence. Yep. <laughs> I think he was in Florida. I think, it, I think yeah. the guy was in Florida. He got remarried. He married a girl. He was in Florida. Yeah. yeah. They got him for a uh, Go find you. Shooting a cop. Shot a couple of cops and killed him. Go find you. You don't do that. <laughs> How did you stay in touch with your family? Letter, mail. Mail? mail. You yeah, did write yeah, letters? Yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah. What was the food like? Oh, the food was good. We had good food. We had very good food. The forage the food was good on. The only thing I didn't like about the Valley Forge was on um, Fridays, uh, no one only had fish. Yep. And I got so, of course, the engine room, we were just a deck below the engine room. And about 10 o'clock or so, you could start smelling that fish being caught. Oh, and yeah. I would, I'd walk down Chow Hall and I'd get what else what I wanted, and that was it. And I wouldn't eat nothing more. I wouldn't <laughs> eat. You, you couldn't pay me to eat a fish. Wow, oh, dear Lord, have mercy. You're right side of the chow hall. It's still, oh, it's still that way. No, no, I, 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 no, I do eat, I will eat fish now, but it was a long time, it was a long, long time before I eat fish. Oh, yeah, eat oh, fish, it, yeah. Was, it was something. You can always smell it. Oh, God, that fish was something. But the engine of the fire room, we, we were the other side of the chow hall, so we didn't, we didn't, uh, we never smelled, we didn't ever get that. But that, on the other ship, they had uh, fish and meat. You eat whatever you wanted. Right. You had okay. both, but the Ford no, it was just it was just uh, it was just fish on Friday. <laughs> um, did you have enough supplies for your job? Did you have enough? Were you supp- did you have enough supplies? Oh yeah, we used, to have, we used to have. Uh, we used to have. It was on the Ford. That was another thing. Was one we never got uh, court marched for, and the okay. best thing it was our officers knew it. Uh, they put us on the work detail, bring supplies down to the to the chow hall. Yeah. Can of case of uh, peaches down the hatch. <laughs> Go back. Case of coffee down the hatch. How else we used to steal? We used to steal. We used to steal anything we could steal. I can never forget one day we were officer came down. And, you guys got anything to eat? She said, "I'm sorry, sir." I says, "Well." All we're all, all supplies. Well, he said, we'll fix that. A couple of days later, we were on work detail again. Down the hatch. <laughs> they know oh, so we, he knew what you were doing. Oh, so, well, sure, he knew what we were doing. We, he knew we were, we were stealing it. Down the hatch. <laughs> Guy below the hatch. Take it down below. We had in the main condensers, they had, a big, they had four holes like that. Yeah. That, that, yeah, it was on this stand, as you go down, it was on the right hand side. 
that I think two of them, two or three of them, and we used to get rags by the uh, uh, bales. We used to take bale rags down and throw them in there, and we'd lock up. We'd go and call in there, go steal the guys, just watch for us, make sure if somebody looked for us, they knew where we were. And we used to hide all our stuff in there. Oh, sure. Oh, yeah, they knew where we were. And so you coffee, can, you, coffee, you can uh, coffee? Coffee. Coffee. I don't remember if we got coffee. We got that from the, if we got that from the cooks. We might have got that from the cooks. But no, anything we could steal that was eatable, oh no, we'd, we'd, we'd disappear. Found a hatch. We'd go back and get another case. <laughs> Take one case back up there so we know you were, we know that we were bringing stuff up there. Oh, okay. On the hatch. <laughs> so sometimes you can make we, your coffee sometimes down there? We, oh yeah, oh yeah. I, I never drank coffee. And I'd be on, had a 48 watch in the morning. And I always remember Gilbert, our, our, uh, he was our first class uh, petty officer. And uh, him and Shepard. And uh, he always said to me, you better have that damn coffee cup. And when I come down here, he says, I want my cup of coffee. <sighs> Never drank coffee. I can't drink coffee. Really? Oh, no. Coffee, drink a cup of coffee. Be beat on me. Oh, my God. My <laughs> mother never drank coffee. <laughs> so the boy got down here in the morning. I washed out the coffee pot and get everything all wet. Put the coffee in it. And put it on the burner. And heat it all up. And Gilbert come down. Oh, Boy, he says that's the best coffee on the ship. <laughs> you couldn't I enjoy never drank the damn stuff. I says if I drank that, he killed me. But I had to repeat on me. But yeah, they were, no, it was good. It was good. It was, we, we, we were good. We, uh, yeah. Now, the other, we used to have to go. I had what you used to call the, the cold iron watch uh, at nighttime, uh, at midnight. Yeah. At midnight, you go to Chow Hall. The two engine rooms and you get sandwiches, they make up sandwiches for you. And you divide them up between each engine room, whoever's on call now. Sometimes it'd be only maybe one engine room. The engine room I was in was number two, so there was just one guy there. That's all you, you got was what you just for one guy, and the person yeah. went to the other engine room. Yeah, you see what they call the midnight snack, the midnight snack. Yeah, yeah, that was nice. Yeah, they had a cook on duty. They had a cook on duty night time. Of course, I suppose them guys probably started probably four or five o'clock in the morning, start cooking up breakfast. Yeah. Oh yeah, it was. But they had no. We had good cooks on there, and we had uh, uh, we had better better bakers on there. I think on the Tuawa than we had on the than we had on the Forge. But the food was good on both of them. No, the food was good on both of them. I heard maybe food was always good. No, no. Board ship was no. The board ship was it wasn't bad. Uh, boot camp sometimes you didn't take too much of it, but uh, uh, what are you going to do? You're not supposed to enjoy it. If, if, if you want to eat, you better eat it. If you don't eat it, well, you, you, you're going to starve with that. You're going to starve with that. <laughs> Did you ever feel any pressure or stress? Not too much, no, no. I think maybe... You figured out how to... Maybe in the fire room I might have had a little more stress because I didn't know what... I was never trained for it, Until you so I didn't know what to do. Oh, okay. I mean, it was when I first went in there. It was you had to look out what you were doing because you could blow the ship up. Okay. You give that ship a shot of cold water, boom, oh. bye, fella. Oh. You're gonna, it's all over with. And we had, uh, I think we had, I think we had four, four, um, yeah. Four fire sites in the, in the, and I was in number one engine room. I think we had four fire sites. We had, to, we had to go inside and clean them off. And when we got through cleaning them, the officer went in there and checked them. Wow. Make sure they were clean. We come out of there, we were black. Oh, God, we were black and Oh, Jesus. Oh, dirty. Oh, my God. Go up and take a shower and oh, oh you watch the mud rock, watch it run right off you. Yeah. Oh dear, it was terrible. <laughs> but when we got through, the guys were, a couple of guys were with me, they were throwing clothes on. I said, I go throw mine away. So I'm going to get a rope, I'm going to tie them onto it with my shirt and my pants, I'm going to tie them on there and throw them over a fan tail. We're driving for about 30, 40 miles in the salt water. I said, that'll clean them up. <laughs> yeah. It did, it did. I brought them back in, <laughs> took them down, showed them, in the, showed them in the laundry, come back, just like new clothes. Smart. I didn't have enough money to buy new pants, new shirt. <laughs> oh, black. Oh, my God, that thing's black. But one thing about it, 
No smoke coming out of the stacks. Oh boy, I heard one time I heard an officer call down and the smoke was coming out of the stacks. Oh boy. Oh boy. You all caught it? Oh, you get shot for that. Uh, I don't know what they did in the old days here in the World War Two. I don't know how they did that. It, it, of course, when I was, I was in the end of World War Two, but they must have got after some of them ships because, boy, you put out fire smoke, surely you're going to get whacked. Right. You're going to get whacked. Oh, it's like a signal. Oh, yeah. sure. Black smoke. Dirty burners. That's all it is. Dirty burners, just like your diesel yeah. vehicles. They don't clean the, they don't clean the, the filters on them. You're going to have black smoke. You're going to have black smoke. You're going to have black smoke. Wow. No, it's, uh, as I say, it's a great experience to do it. And if I had to do it over again, and I could go back on the two, one carrier or two aircraft carriers, I'd do it again. I'd do it again. I met a kid from Texas. Uh, um, well, he was, a, he was a sergeant. He got busted a couple of times, and then he was back up to sergeant again. Uh, big tall kid from Texas. He was, a, he, was, he was a good fellow. He was a good boy. He was a good, he was a good fellow. No, I got along good with the with the with the Marines on there, both ships. I had I had good contact with them. They were uh, I never had no I never had no problems with them. Good.